Good morning. My name is Michael. I am one of the pastors here, and I'm excited to start this new message series called Every Day Matters, because there are stuff, right? There's stuff in our everyday things, decisions that we've got to make, thousands of decisions we make every single day. That matters, right? Uh, we have challenging circumstances that come at us sideways, and that matters. And today, we're going to take a journey through how we can deal with our worry. Worry. You have worries. You, you've, you've got things in your life that you're worried about. You, you, you've brought those worries and they're here with you, right? You're worried about things. And there are things to worry about, right? Why do we worry? Because there's things to worry about. It's that simple, isn't it? Right? We worry about things. You're worried about your finances. You're worried about your health. You're worried about the health of someone else. You're worried about a diagnosis. You're worried about your living space. You're worried about your relationships. You're worried about just your daily tasks and living, your jobs, and all of that, right? There's lots to worry about. And I'll be honest with you. I'm a worrier. Not warrior. No, the opposite of that. I'm a worrier. I worry about a lot of things. In fact, the way that I think about worry is that it's kind of like a freight train, right? If it's a freight train, you start thinking about something, right? A decision that needs to be made or uh, the way somebody responds to you or whether your finances are going to be enough, and you just start thinking about that, and it keeps getting faster and faster, and the more and more that you think about it, and try to solve it and try to figure out the problem, it's just moving down the track really, really fast, and you've got all these worries there, and it's impossible to slow that worrying train down, isn't it? Well, here's the cool thing with this everyday matters. Worry is about our everyday life. We have everyday life things that we worry about, but when we connect with Jesus, he helps us. To, to engage with God in a way that makes every day matter. See what I did there? Yeah? This is what Jesus does. He's going to take our worry, and he's going to help us move through a way that we can make every day matter. And, and sometimes, you know, when I go and I study the Bible, I've got stuff that I'm worried about, right? And so I go to the Bible, I'm like, where can I find some kind of good word? Something where Jesus speaks into my life and it solves the problem. And I did that with this one and I opened up to Matthew chapter 6, which you can do. I encourage you to do that. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to be verses 25 through 33. And I open up there and I read Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, and I'm like, huh, yeah, that didn't help at all, actually, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to see what I mean? Okay, think about the worry that you brought in, okay? You've got something on your mind, something in your heart that you're worried about. And we're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 6. It's a, it's a section of Jesus teaching. He's teaching a large group of people. And he's got them all sitting there. And he's just gotten done talking about their um, possessions, right? Not being focused on their possessions. And so now J Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, he says this. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Sunday school answer is, yeah, yeah, it's more than that. Sure it is. It's more than food and more than clothing, but... I don't know if I've got enough food or enough clothing, and where am I going to get more food and clothing? How did right? But so I started thinking about it, right, and I start worrying about it. So it's actually really isn't helpful. Well, what's also not helpful is that I took this completely out of context. You see what I did there? Jesus, I started here where Jesus has already had a conversation going, and we just cut right in. Right? You can't start reading scripture and go like where he comes in and says, "That is why I tell you this." Right? Why do you tell me this? Like, there's something clearly that came before this that leads him to say, and that is why I tell you not to worry about these things that are worth worrying about. Right? Food. I worry about food. Right? 
I need food. I like food, but I also need food, right? And if I don't have enough food, that impacts my health to such a degree that maybe, well, I die. A little fatalist there, I know that, but like that's the end result, right? So of course I'm worried about this. And what about clothing? Of course I worry about clothing. Not, you know, am I wearing the right name brand and things like that, or, or do I look good in what I'm wearing? But, like, I need to clothe my body. You need to clothe your body. Otherwise, we're subject to vulnerability, aren't we? We're unprotected. And then we could, well, we could die. I mean, these seem to be really foundational things that we need to be worried about. But something leads Jesus to say, and that's why I tell you not to worry about these things, okay? So we're going to back up one verse, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, to hear the setup of this whole thing. Here's what Jesus says. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Serve God and be enslaved to money. Well, I mean, I guess on a foundational level, to have food and have clothing, (laughs) you need money, right? I I get that. But here's the little thing, and we're going to nerd out just a little bit, so hang there with me. For anybody that went through the Discover the Bible 101 class, that's a shameless plug, by the way, Discover the Bible 101 class, we talked about translations, Bible translations, really smart people that take an an ancient language or text and they translate it into a modern language or text, okay? So we have really smart people that are taking Greek, here an ancient language, and translating it into our own modern language, English, right? They're translating it. And this translation decides to translate a Greek word as money. That Greek word is mammon. Mammon, you don't need to remember it, just hang hang with me, right? They decide to say that that's money. Now, that's not exactly what it is, but it's getting the idea, right? There's God, and then there's this other thing, and we can't be serving both things. Right? If we're all worried about this mammon, right, this money thing, it takes us away from really saying we're here to be in a relationship with God. Right? We're all focused on this other thing. Now, another translation, which will be not be named, um, leaves the Greek word as mammon. You may have heard it as you can't love both God or serve both God and mammon, which is interesting to me that you are a group of smart people that are devoted and paid to translate the Bible and you fail to translate the Bible. It's not helpful except for this. Now i got to figure out what that word mammon actually means. What does mammon mean? And here's the payoff. Mammon has to do with earthly goods. Often, in uh, their literature, in the Greek literature, using the word mammon for earthly goods is a connection to getting earthly goods by uh, unsavory means, right? Maybe uh, you cut a few corners to get something more for you. You cheat or you lie or steal something, these earthly goods, from someone else. Now, that's not what Jesus is saying here. That's what's happening. He's just saying that if your focus is on getting these earthly goods, you're worried about getting these earthly goods, you can't be thinking about God the Father, the the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of, well, heavenly goods and earthly goods, right? You, You can't have it both ways. And for that reason, Jesus is inviting us into not worrying about the earthly goods. What are you going to eat and drink, and what are you going to wear? Yeah, now it makes a little bit more sense. Now I have something to work with here. But I still need a little bit of help of making that transition. How can I get my focus off of these earthly goods that matter to focusing on, on a bigger picture of something of who God is? Well, we're in luck because Jesus is going to give us an illustration that will help 
change our focus from just here on these earthly goods to the bigger picture of this God who is the creator of heaven and earth. So verse 26, he's going to invite us into looking at something. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? A couple of things here, right? We just got a new picture of who God is, this creator of heaven and earth. Jesus is inviting us to seeing this God of creator of heaven and earth as also our heavenly father that cares for us. We can see that because we know that God has created these birds that fly in the skies, or as the Bible likes to call it, the heavens, which I think is kind of fun, right? They fly in the heavens, and yet this heavenly Father has created them. He cares for them. And you are such greater value than those birds, right? This heavenly Father. It's a new way to think about this God who created everything. It's a new way to shift our focus from these earthly goods to the heavenly goods by seeing God as our heavenly father. Hmm. Well, that's kind of helpful. That's much more helpful. And, and Jesus is going to ask a question that might seem easy to answer on the surface, but it's a little bit deeper than that. Here's what he says in verse 27. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life. Just pause and think about that before you answer. Can all the worrying about these earthly goods, am I going to have enough food to eat? Am I going to have enough money in my bank account? Am I, I going to have a job tomorrow? Right? Is my relationship going to be so fruitful? Or where is my relationship going with this person? Right? Uh, all of these things that we worry about, can worrying about them, actually add anything to your life. Now, we all want to say no, right? Of course it doesn't. But I'll be honest with you. I live as though worrying about it actually does something. When I worry about it, it's because I feel like if I just keep thinking about it and keep talking about it and keep rolling it around in my mind and my heart that somehow, poof, it'll be fixed. It'll be solved. There will be a solution. But it actually doesn't get me anywhere. What it does is it makes me more irritable. It makes me more stressed out. It makes me more cranky. It makes me turn to other things to help alleviate that. Sometimes that's food. Right? Sometimes that's other things to distract me, to stop worrying about stuff. But it actually doesn't add anything. I don't think I'm alone in this, right? So Jesus is going to give us another way to look at this, okay? Another way to see this creator of heaven and earth, our heavenly father. And he puts it in the perspective of some flowers. As he says in verse 28, and why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? This feels a little condemning. <laughs> Right? I mean, I'm just a human being, and yeah, I get caught up in the earthly goods, and these are legitimate things to worry about, so why are you calling me I don't have enough faith? Right? That's our interpretation of it, isn't it? When he says little faith, it means that I don't have enough faith. Right? So as if I should just start faithing more. Right? Right? It sounds silly, but that's, that's what we're doing. I, I'm convinced that is not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is not talking about that we don't have enough faith. The little faith that he's talking about is that we're putting our faith in little things instead of a great big thing. We're putting our faith in the little things like food and having enough food 
is going to make everything better. We're putting our faith in money and mammon and earthly goods as if that's supposed to be what life is all about. Instead of the great big thing about this creator of heaven and earth who is like a heavenly father that cares for you. Put your faith into that great big thing. Here's why I'm convinced that that's the thing that Jesus is talking about. It's about what he says next and has everything to do with what people are putting their faith in. Verse 31. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. These little things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Now, when Jesus is talking about this, he's not just talking about people that don't believe in God at all. He's talking about people that don't believe in the God of the Bible. He doesn't, they don't believe in God as their heavenly father. The way that Jesus is presenting him, the way that Jesus knows him, is inviting us into experiencing this great God of heaven and earth. They, they actually have little faith because they have faith in these little gods, these little figurines that they make of their gods and they put them in their homes and they put them in their workplaces. And sometimes they take those little figurines and they pray to them and ask them to provide for their, well, earthly goods because that's what their minds are dominated with. And sometimes they take these little figurines and they make great big figurines. I think the technical name is statue. I think that's what that is. Right? They make these great big statues of their gods and they put them in their places of worship that they're supposed to keep it pleasing and things like that. That's, and he looks at those giant statues of their gods and he says, that's little faith because you have little gods rather than the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of you that cares for you. That's where you put your faith. And that's where Jesus invites us into bringing our worries to gain the new perspective of who this, well, this great creator God, your heavenly father that cares for you and knows all that you need. Certainly, certainly he will take care of them. And this is something that will help us not just slow the worry train down, but just not even get on it. Not even get on the worry train. Here's what Jesus says as he directs us further in verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Seek earthly goods above all else. That's not what he said. Seek the kingdom of God. This God who is the creator of heaven and earth, this God who is like a heavenly father that cares for you, seek that above everything else. Where does your mind go? Right back to your thing you're worried about? Or does it expand into this, who this great God is and what kind of kingdom this God is about? And as we think and meditate on this great kingdom that we live in with this God, that Jesus is inviting us into this kingdom where we have a heavenly father that cares for us, that we can now live in a right way. We don't have to get so irritable and hangry, right? And upset and stressed out by the little things in our life because now we start seeing them as little things because we have entered into a place of big faith with a big God. And when we experience that, we know we have all that we need. It's a completely different experience, isn't it? It's completely upside down from the world that the, uh, Jesus, in Jesus' day they lived in. I think it's an upside down world of the way that we live, isn't it? We start first with the thing that we're worried about. And we know that God is a good God, or we've heard that he's a good God, and maybe we think this is like a heavenly father who cares about me, and so like, okay, God, here's this thing I'm worried about. Fix it. That's 
turning him into a little statue, a little figurine, a giant figurine, and saying, OK, I trust you to fix it, rather than starting with who God is and God's very own character, getting to know who this God is, and then living it out amongst other people, we realize we have everything. My invitation to you is I, I want you to think about that worry that you brought here this morning, the very thing that's been consuming your mind, that worry that's going to be there when you leave here too, the thing that has been propelling your worry train, that you've been having a tough time trying to settle down, you, you, you've lost sleep over this thing. And I invite you to bring that as we prayerfully go through Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seeking God's kingdom above everything else. How is it that we can live righteously in a right way, pleasing to God and pleasing to other people, right? How, how do we live in a right way towards other people and towards God? And then realizing that we have everything that we need because we have a heavenly father that cares for us. So I'm going to invite you to do that in just a second. So think about that worry, a worry that you have. Right? You brought it in here. It's in your, in your mind. It's a thing that you're, you're on this worry train. And we're going to come to a place where we're going to prayerfully turn this upside down to get off that worry train and focus on God's kingdom. Let's take a deep breath. We're going to hear the scripture and then we're going to pray the scripture. Here's, it. Here's the scripture. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and God will give you everything you need. Heavenly Father, we look forward to your kingdom. We want to live in a way that's pleasing to you, that honors you as is a right relationship with you. And we do that because we know that you provide for everything that we need. Amen.